Sylvia and me. 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 Hi, I'm Sylvia Beckerman, host of the podcast series Sylvia and Me: Conversations with Extraordinary, Inspiring Women. Hi, I'm Rose Morris, and I am the founder and president of Abrams Nation, and we are here with Sylvia and me. Rose, thank you so much for being here um, during these uh, wild, crazy, frightening times. Um, I want to, as you said, you are the founder of Abram Nations, um, and prior to that name, it was called Abram's Bed. My son is Abram, and this is the bed he slept in, so it was like, I don't know, it's Abram's bed, and it just kind of fell into that when um, we... Um, when we expanded and wanted to grow, we said we, we provide this for the whole nation, for the whole world, and Abram's world didn't sound as good as Abram's nation, so. Let's go back a little. You were a teacher. Yep. Um, uh, was it I middle school? I taught in New Mexico, and I taught in Texas, in Dallas. I taught middle school. Uh, I was a science teacher. Sometimes I, you know, had math class as well, but uh, poor kids. <laughs> Sixth grade science is pretty fun. You know, we made pancakes to show chemical change and we we uh, played around with rocks and volcanoes. And then you met your husband, you got married and uh, you're living in Pittsburgh. Yes, moved to Pittsburgh. Have... Um, Christmas, moved in on Christmas Eve of 2003. And you're the mother of three children. Yes. A 25 year old a 15 year old and I guess a 12 year old? Yes, good memory. Okay, so your um, 15 year old, his name is Abram, mm -hmm. and he was diagnosed at the age of two with autism. Right. How, how were you able to deal with that? Um, oh, it was such a crazy time because uh, you know, he was, he was my first child in a while. My other one is 10 years older, uh, first child of this marriage and, you know, new house, new city, uh, no connections. So there was a lot of new going on, but I knew something was up with him. And we actually think we got him diagnosed closer to 15 months, 15 or 16. It was, it was before too. So in that time frame, it was just a matter of trying to juggle everything and manage everything. But once we got the diagnosis, I knew something wasn't right. So getting the diagnosis just kind of firmed up and gave us a driving point. Uh, it's almost like I, I knew what armor to put on and now I knew what battle to fight. So for me, it, it felt liberating because at least we had named it and we knew where we were going. It wasn't a crazy unknown and it wasn't um, ambiguous. I had a lot of learning to do. And uh, fortunately in the state of Pennsylvania, we had amazing services I can't imagine doing that life with autism somewhere that didn't have the support system that we had. So I feel very blessed. And from your experience and having been a mom to um, your daughter who was 10 years older, uh, you actually came up with a product quite by necessity. Can you tell me how, um, what, what was the um, event or, you know, the life-changing actual uh, right. event that precipitated you to do what you did? Right. So at home, Abram is very smart, but he has his own challenges. So he was climbing out of the crib very early, and I was worried that he was going to hurt himself, break a leg. I, uh, he, would, he would spin around in the room and throw himself up against the wall to kind of stay awake. Uh, and, and I was really worried. Is he going to, he would headbang a lot as well. So, you know, is he going to have a brain bleed? Is he going to, you know, hit a corner? Uh, so we had something that we did with his crib to kind of keep him in the crib because it was way too early to be in a big boy bed. And so we had that and that worked for us at home. But when we were traveling, we had, we had no option. We had nothing to do. We were trying all these things with a pack and play, which just weren't working. And I was searching or things to make a pack and play be contained, be enclosed. And I wasn't coming up with anything because there wasn't anything quite like that. 
I wasn't searching for the terms that I know now for enclosed beds and medical equipment because I, I wasn't there. I was just thinking, fix my problem. So we were uh, at uh, another friend's house trying to have a vacation in the summer and I was explaining why at home we have what we have and why that works and how we would need to make that to travel. And between myself and my husband and um, our friend, we came up with the idea. We laid a mattress down. It needed to be a regular mattress, and we enclosed it. And that's kind of where it started. Um, I came home. We used our system here. Abram actually annihilated it. He put a hole in it and was back in the crib as if to say, now what? You know, I got out, and I got back in. Now what are you going to do? So I was literally duct taping the crib tent. I had already sewn it multiple times. Um, so I was at duct, duct tape and I called our uh, friend in, in, in Dallas and said, you know, listen, do you have that thing that we talked about? Do you think you could make it? He said, yeah, you know, I've already got one. It's here. He sent it to me and it literally was just life changing. Um, it wasn't perfect yet. You know, we've made a lot of iterations, but we were able to put Abram in it and zip it up. And he was in a regular size bed, which gave him more space. He was enclosed, but didn't feel trapped. It was, it's like a tent. It's very light and airy inside. And I knew he was safe. So part of that is the mom guilt that you feel. Oh. And mom guilt is all of those things that have never happened and are probably not going to happen. But we already feel the emotion of all the potential things. So I had a lot of mom guilt thinking, I'm going to be downstairs. Abram's going to be up quiet in his room. And I'm going to be down having a glass of wine thinking, finally, he's quiet. And in reality, he's going to have gotten out of his crib and spun around and hit his temple on his door handle and killed himself. And just that, oh you know, that emotion that you feel in your chest, that's what I was living with. And that's what, when we got the safety sleeper and we put him in it, that's what was taken away. I feel like angels just lifted that off of me. I, I, taken, can, yeah. I, I can just imagine how freeing that was for you, that moment when yes. you realized that, wow, I mean, what, you know, changing your quality of life, not just your son's, but yours. Um, you know, you, parents in general have enough to deal with. Parents with children with um, autism, uh, with disabilities, it's, it's tenfold, if not 20-fold. So you were able to relieve some of your guilt and, and and really give him what he needed, which was your love, your caring, and not added on that layer of guilt. Oh, so absolutely. So when did you know that you wanted this for other people, that it was something that mm -hmm. would help other parents in your situation? Right. So the story continues on. We we had him in the bed, it was working, it was amazing. We had decided to have another child. I was pregnant when we actually designed the safety sleeper. So, you know, fast forward a few months. Now I have, and my husband was military, so he would, he would deploy and go TDY a lot. I have an infant and a child with autism who runs and, and carries 33 hours a week of therapy, plus a teenager and all of those hormones. So the hormones were like free flowing in the house. And I, I just was so, I know I was in my dining room and I was so thankful that I had the safety sleeper to put Abram into. And I thought, how do other people do this? How? If I did not have the safety sleeper where I knew I could put Abram and he was safe, I could get a timeout. He could have a timeout. He's safe. He can sleep. I can tend to Macy. I can deal with the teenager. I did not know how I could do it without it. And it literally was life changing and life saving for me. And I just had a moment where I believe I had a spiritual just moment. And I felt like, you know, I had one friend who helped me with physically making something. I then needed to turn and be that friend to all those people who I didn't know, who I was guessing had it as bad as me or maybe even worse. And what I've learned is they, 
so many people have it worse than me. I, I had it so easy and it was so hard. My easy was so hard compared to so many others. So to be able to give that gift to them is, I, I don't know the right words to explain it other than, you know, life-saving, life-changing. So it's just amazing. And, and you have, you've changed mm -hmm. the quality of life for so many people yeah. living with children with a disability, living with children with, with autism and, and so much more. Um, so you have the Abram bed, which is the safety sleeper. Um, but you've also started a GoFundMe, um, a fund forward. Can you tell me something about that? Sure. Yeah. So at the time when we started and I had, you know, it was just Abram's bed. We didn't know what to do. So we, we named the company. We decided, okay, let's, let's, let's make this a company, I guess, to see if we can help other people. When we did that, it started off as a nonprofit and I wanted to just help. I didn't know how to run a business. I just wanted to get it out there and, and help people. But um, there were several things that happened. And along the way, we realized we need to have a nonprofit and we need to have a for-profit. So we split the two instead of it being one. The nonprofit is called Fund It Forward. So we raise funds to pay it forward with equipment. It's equipment-based. It's not covered by insurance. And that was created to help people get the safety sleeper, but also wheelchair, adaptive bike, uh, special needs, any equipment that's not covered, right? Trampolines, swimming pools, we've done a variety of things. And then we created the company. And at that point we named it, the company's name was Abrams Bed. It's now changed to Abrams Nation with a product of the safety sleeper. And we now have more products. So it makes more sense when you see the umbrella of Abrams Nation has a variety of products. What other products do you have? Right, so we have the wheelie cape, which is a cape that's designed to accommodate a wheelchair user and cover their backpack, have their handles be out, go over the wheels so they're not getting tangled up and dirty. We have the fidget folder, which is a portable sensory therapy board, works on different bundles, work on different um, attributes. So there's a dressing bundle, there's a tactile bundle, um, a motor sensory, there's even a visual bundle. We're working with one of the, um, the school for the blind to, to kind of work on a visual bundle. There's the feely mat, which is a four by four mat that lays on the floor and has a variety of different activities that are Velcroed on. So if you have um, an older child who still has that cognitive level that's younger that needs to be down on the floor manipulating things, we have that for them. And right now we're coming out and we're redesigning our incontinence pad to go and fit wheelchairs, strollers, uh, and even possibly betting. In 2017, Abrams Nation was awarded the um, Small Business Association Exporter of the Year for Abrams yeah. Bed. Yeah, that was crazy. Felt really, I mean, you know, you, you've helped so many people. Yeah, um, we really have. What, so how is the pandemic, um, how is that affecting you and your everyday life? Right, so what we did here, we are considered an essential business because we do make a product that is considered medical equipment. We are covered by insurance in a lot of states. Durable medical companies help get this supplied. We're FDA registered. So we, we qualify under you know several areas, but we also have fabric that is a high quality, a medical grade fabric. It's antimicrobial, its strength factor is you know, far greater than cotton. So we started making masks as well. We have, we have sewers here, we have machines, we have fabric. It just kind of seemed like the smart and right thing to do to help out and get some masks into the community so that we could save the N95 masks for the medical people. And so that's what we've done as well. And we are right now kind of redesigning it to see if we can get it to be faster so we can get it to be less expensive help more people. Well, that's, uh, that's fantastic. April was um, autism month. And there are a number of things that you, you've talked about. One is live with gratitude. Hmm. Can you expand that's on that? Right. Uh, you know, it's a choice. You definitely, there's plenty of times you have to make a conscious choice to live with gratitude. Um, 
all it takes is this talking to somebody who has it worse than you and you just think, oh my goodness, you know, thank goodness I have autism and not blank diagnosis. But you know, the funny thing when I did that is I talked to a lot of families and they feel the same thing about their life. Oh, thank goodness I have blank diagnosis instead of autism because at least people can see my child has a disability and they're more open. At least, at least my child eats and yours doesn't, or at least my, so we all have our own weeds and we all get used to our weeds and we think the grass is greener, but really there's just different weeds over there. Um, I think it's a choice to live with gratitude. It, it makes your life better, happier. Your anxiety is less, your stress is less. Everyone around you is happier. You can sleep better. You can learn better. Uh, but there's days where we want to just be grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, there are. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of valid concerns and valid reasons to be grumpy. And you just have to make that choice to be grateful. What do you have? We live in an amazing country. We have amazing opportunities. You know, we have a lot to be grateful for. Well, the other thing is find joy in the everyday. Absolutely. Absolutely. Abrams here. My kids are here at the office with me doing school. We, we, we started calling it Abrams Nation Academy. Um, one of my coworkers out there, she has a daughter who's in school as well. So I said, bring her. She can come here. They can do school together. So they've made their niche. New friends have happened because of COVID. Um, you know, Abram, after he's done with his schoolwork, will, will text me and say, do you have hot knife work? We have a hot knife and we cut our lycra, our, our um, elastic on it. So I let him go out there and cut and he has a job and he's learned that skill and he's, he's very good at it and he's very helpful. So, so part of it's just finding those little things. And uh, stay focused on what's important. Oh. Yeah, I think that goes back to being to, to the gratitude as well. I, I say don't make easy hard. Uh, you know, everything is relative, right? So stay focused on, on what really matters. What matters at the end of the day is that we're safe. What matters is my people are employed, that we are making a product for families so they can have a safe night's sleep so that their child is in their bed the next morning and not out on a highway at four in the morning. And when you really boil it down, what matters is, is just life and love and liberty and the ability to just continue on for another day. Well, you, you certainly um, have designed something, not just a company that helps so many people, um, and then you know, being able to, on a dime, go, okay, now we're making masks. Uh, you know, uh, not mm -hmm. everyone can look at things in such a positive uh, voice the way you do. And I know, as you said, we all have our, our bad moments. We all have our, you know, stresses that we mm -hmm. go through. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I think is, is absolutely fantastic is the fact that what you have built and, and the products that you're, you're doing and, and the story that you um, you went through a tough time. You went through feeling that guilt that parents have. You're human, um, but you didn't let that stop you from trying to figure out what was necessary, what you needed, and you saw that. You recognized it, and now you know so many other people are able to recognize that. So. You've got, uh, you've got, you have a number of products that um, they, you know, they have, uh, you've expanded into, you know, other areas um, and you haven't just focused on, on your needs with your child with autism. Um, you know, everything that you've mentioned really just has tentacles out to the world of people with disabilities that, that need, uh, you, you know, and you think about it, the, the cape you were talking about, who would think, you know, something so simple and, and you know, and I, I, that we would just put on a raincoat or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a necessity. It's, it's great. Yeah. Until you walk in those shoes, you don't realize. You no. Know, I, I had my mom with me and it just got hard to put a big wool coat on her because when she would sit, there would just be so much fabric and it would get tangled in the wheels and it was getting dirty. And that's where that came from. And 
you don't know until you walk, you know, the, the saying, you know, take, walk, what is it? Um, walk a mile in my shoes. Yes. When you start walking in someone else's shoes, you see those, those difficulties. And, and we just, I do feel fortunate. We have a great team here. We have minds that think and people that sew and, and we try different things. Oh, that, that, maybe that's a problem. Let's see if we can fix it. Just some practical help goes a long way. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, Rose, I thank you so much for being with me this morning. Mm -hmm. And yes, being with me means I'm in Connecticut, you're in Pittsburgh. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're connecting. And that is, you know, with, with all of the horror that's come out of and is still continuing to come out of this pandemic, it has connected people who would never have thought of of becoming connected yeah. where can before we go where can people find out information about abrams nation and also uh your nonprofit? right so abrams nation we have a website it's abramsnation.com if you remember the word if you remember the safety sleeper the safety sleeper.com will also get you back there we're on social media facebook we're on instagram we're on twitter you can find us there safety sleeper um, Abrams Nation, either one, they, they, they both go. Uh, fund It Forward is funditforward.org and it's funditfwd.org. So that's our, that's our space out there. You can also dial 72496-SLEEP. We have every possible way to get a hold of us if you need to talk to us. And uh, our team is here always ready to just talk to people, answer your questions, help you get informed. And if, if there's a different product that works for you, we're, we're willing to to help guide you there too. We just wanna help families get what they need. That's fantastic. Again, Rose, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, I really appreciate it. You can find us on all of your popular podcast platforms and of course our website, sylviaandme.com. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned.